Since its inception, Live Golf has been a very controversial topic in the golfing world, but that hasn't stopped pro golfers from joining the organization. This has created a feud between Live and PGA Tour players. That's why Spain's John Rahm fears that the Masters dinner this year is going to be a little tense. Stay tuned as we discuss the awkward moment the golf star faced amid the Masters and more. First up, Rahm fears the Masters will be awkward. The world's number four, John Rahm, said that he thinks more PGA Tour players will leave for Live Golf, which is backed by Saudi Arabia in 2023. He also thinks the Champions Dinner at the Masters will be tense. Rom spoke before the PGA Tournament of Champions in Kapalua, Hawaii, which is a special event for tournament winners who qualified for the Tour Championship. The 2021 U.S. Open winner, Rom, thinks that even though the prize money at some events has gone up, more golfers will leave the PGA for the higher prize money offered by Live Golf. Rom said that he thinks all golfers know where they stand, and there will still be some players who decide to switch to Live. He continued by saying that a lot of them can also see where the PGA Tour is headed. Rom confessed that the PGA Tour is making the changes they need to make to keep up with the times, and he thinks that's good for everyone. The PGA has increased the prize money at a small number of events in order to keep top players from leaving, like Australian Cam Smith, who won the British Open, did. Rom also admitted that he's excited to see how this year turns out and thinks it's going to be fun. The Masters announced last month that the rules for qualifying for the 2023 Masters would not change, which means that live golf players will be able to play. By the looks of it, Rom might be right about this year being exciting especially the Masters, but fun would be debatable. Next up, golfers won't be on friendly terms like last year. From what we can tell, looking at the drama from last year, there's going to be a lot of bad blood at the Masters, and it has a lot to do with the Masters' decision to let live golfers play at Augusta. Among the live players at the Masters are the three-times Masters winner Phil Mickelson, Patrick Reed, Dustin Johnson, and Bubba Watson, to name a few. They will join proud members of the PGA Tour, like Tiger Woods, for a formal Masters dinner. Even though Augusta National Chairman Fred Ridley didn't directly say anything about Live Golf, he made it clear that the split is not good for the sport. Ridley said that the recent actions have hurt men's professional golf by taking away from the good things about the game and the important legacies of those who built it. Rom realizes how tense and awkward the dinner is going to be, and says that he wishes he could be a fly on the wall at Augusta National in April for the Masters Champions Dinner, not for the fabulous menu past winners will consume. The world number four said he thinks the Masters Champions Dinner will be a little tenser than it has been in the past, which is probably only funny to him. He further added that he keeps thinking about it because he wishes he could be there and see how things turn out. Too bad there isn't one at the US Open. According to Rom, golfers will have to deal with any personal problems at the majors. That leads us to Rom's statement. According to Rom, he didn't feel any different at any of the majors last year. He respects live players' choices, and he'll continue to be friends with them. Rom believes that big problems can be avoided if players stay away from each other, but this could be harder at the Masters depending on who is paired with whom. He claimed that a lot of bad blood, if there is any, might be caused more by reporters than anything else. Rom said that he thinks the PGA of America and European Tour should make a decision together, and it doesn't make sense for one team to let live players play and the other team not to. Moving on, a former Masters champion also expressed fears for iconic major. The two-time Masters champion Ben Crenshaw is also worried that the bad blood between the golfers after the live split will ruin the first major of the year. Crenshaw won two green jackets at Augusta and won 19 times on the PGA Tour before he retired. But after the Saudi-funded live series lured many stars away from golf's established tournaments in 2023, legacies like that may become less common in the years to come. In December, the organizer said that any player who meets the qualifications will be able to play in the 2023 Masters, which starts on April 6th. When asked if he thought this year's tournament would turn into a media circus because of the feud between the golfers, Crenshaw said he hopes that it doesn't. Crenshaw further said that it's a tournament where the winner can completely change his life. It's a memory that gives him life. He admitted that he hopes the focus is on the winner and the tournament, but he isn't sure. The future of Live Golf Invitational Series players will be decided in February, whether they'll be allowed to play in DP World Tour events or not. That in turn will make some players want to stay with the golf establishment or leave for places where they can make more money. Since it doesn't look like any of the four major tournaments will ban live golfers from going, more attention will be paid to whether the Saudi-backed rival can get its players' official world golf ranking points. But there's a chance that live golf might become irrelevant in the growing Saudi sports washing portfolio. That leads us to, is live golf at risk of becoming irrelevant? It says a lot about Cristiano Ronaldo that the main topic of conversation about his move to the Saudi Arabian League is his steady decline in football. According to the European Saudi Organization for Human Rights, Ronaldo was shown off at the end of a year in which at least 147 people were put to death in Saudi Arabia. Al Nasser
Twitter will now give updates to Ronaldo's 526 million Instagram followers and 106 million Twitter followers as football fans debate his decline on the field. Since the Saudis bought one of the most famous players in the game, goals and assists no longer matter, nor does where Ronaldo gets his weekly salary from. Sports washing works. The rise of Newcastle United to the top of the Premier League and the hero worship of Eddie Howe as a result will be seen as another success story in the UK, and the Saudi Grand Prix is now normalized. If Tyson Fury fights Oleksandr Yusik in Saudi Arabia in March, the boxing world will shrug its shoulders. That's another win for the recent Saudi sporting endeavor. On the other hand, golf has quickly become the Saudi sport that stands out from the crowd, but not in a good way. Anyone involved with Live is sure that it will do well in the future. The organization is backed by the public investment fund to the tune of $2 billion. But Live Golf is surrounded by controversies, which could result in a bad reputation for the owners, the Saudis. Moving on to how good is Live Golf? This organization is entering 2023 with a lot of questions and doubts, and any response from Greg Norman and his friends will be interesting to hear. During this time when mainstream golf has pretty much stopped, Live hasn't been able to pick up steam, so it's clear that Live needs a boost if it plans to stay relevant in the books of Saudi sports. Live COO and President Atul Kosla spoke calmly to a group of journalists at Doral at the end of October. Kosla agreed that Liv needed a deal with a broadcaster and said that a schedule for 2023 would be available by the end of next month, November 2022. He also claimed that by the end of 2022, teams would be ready for this calendar year. Just before Christmas, it was announced that Kosla, who many people saw as the face of Liv, had left the organization after only a year. The chief commercial officer, Sean Bratches, also quit after just six months in May last year. It's intriguing that Liv is unable to retain experienced sports executives hired from outside the company, but it's also telling. When the case between Live members and the European Tour Group goes to sports arbitration in February, Kosla will be called as a witness. There is no reason to think that Kosla, who is supposed to speak in defense of Live players, won't, but it will be interesting to see how he acts since his departure from the Rebel Tour was so sudden and unclear so far. Next up, what's in store for Live Golf in 2023? There's no doubt that Live Golf is making waves, but that has caused more harm to the organization than good. Neither the US nor the UK has signed a TV contract with Live yet, which is a must for the success of any sports organization. The full schedule for this year hasn't come out yet, and the Live site only lists seven tournaments. Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley, who were the most talked about names in rumors, have decided to stay on the PGA Tour, which further hurt the organization. If the PIF is happy to give Pat Perez and Peter Ulin millions of dollars, that's fine, but if they don't, they'll have to give even more outrageous amounts to get famous golfers to come to Live. With every deal like this, the potential return on investment changes, and contrary to what most people think, our why goals do exist. In defense of Liv, they were able to get some great talent to join them. They can blatantly say that Cameron Smith, Bryson DeChambeau, and Dustin Johnson joining them was a win over the golf establishment. But since then, the talent train from the PGA Tour has slowed down. If Liv keeps the same cast and doesn't find a way to broadcast its events, the organization may become irrelevant really soon. The Liv story of 2022 was interesting because it was a will he or won't he story about players who were tempted by their blank checks. But if there's no narrative to be told in 2023, will anyone care about the blank checks? That's a wrap for this video. Do you think the Masters will turn out to be a trash talk competition? And will Live Golf get the necessary jumpstart that it desperately needs? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Cantor's newfound confidence carried over into his match with Patrick Reed.